Um, so, we're here to talk about what we did in the hackerspace this uh, last year. Um, basically, we did a whole bunch of carpentry. And the reason why we did it was because we wanted the, uh, the hackerspace to be nicer, but also that we wanted to get people more involved into, um, into the, app, the actual hackerspace itself. But first, we had to do a whole bunch of, tr of planning. Um, sorry. I'm from the Oslo hackerspace, if you're wondering. Um, and uh, planning happens in front of a whiteboard and ends up with a whole bunch of discussions that tend to not lead anywhere unless you use, come on. Yes? No? no. Maybe? Page down. Yeah. Pseudo power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, once you uh, get past that stage, you can uh, start with small stuff, like uh, painting a table with your Hackerspace logo. Um, end result is kind of sweet. Uh, why was it that you did this? Uh, so the reason why we actually started with this at all is because some genius spilled black paint all over our tables. So we just had to do something and be creative about it. Right. <laughs> I'm not that smart. We, I we wish I was. We have a lot of geniuses uh, at, at our space. Um, and then uh, once we did the small stuff, uh, we started doing some bigger stuff. Of course, everybody who wasn't doing this was pretty annoyed by the, uh, at the person that had painted over our white screen for our uh, projector. Uh, but it turned out really pretty in the end. There you go. Uh, there's some mountains and some uh, sky there. It's kind of hard to see on a on a dark picture like this. You can also see our like s sound system, which was made by the hackerspace as well. There we go. So this, this again just springs out from the table painting when I was bored and just like, I want to do something. I want to change the room into something better. So let's why not paint the entire wall. And then you get other things. So after this, we made a projection screen because people were definitely annoyed. So just by starting doing one thing, you would get like an infinite chance of other things you actually need to do. And it's a good way to motivate people to actually get shit done, if you can manage. You basically start shaving the yak, yeah? <laughs> and when you start shaving the yak, people are like, why are you shaving that yak? I don't get it. And, and then you're like, well, you know, I started by going out for pizza. Uh, dot, 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 dot. And, like, in, and about an hour into the story, they get into it themselves and start helping you shave the yak. Uh, so it, the pictures are all whack because you can see the top on the bottom. I don't know why. I don't know why. Uh, is this a video? Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, yeah. Ah, it's because I, uh, yeah. Mm. Here we go. Uh, so the next thing we did was uh, fix the bar. And the way to do this is to ignore all the mess in the back, yeah? All the mess in the background, all the stuff that you know you need to do but don't want to. You just ignore it. And then you start doing the one thing that you want to do. And this is... Uh, our uh, our friend Sub, he's uh, he's uh, going crazy with uh, with hammers and, and screwdrivers and stuff. You also need to feed that Italian guy with lots of espresso and grappa, and then he will start doing things. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's how it works. Let's see, and and next slide is uh, and then uh, we did the backyard. Yeah, uh, we figured that would be nice. We have a very crazy backyard with a lot of crazy people showing up in it because we share it with a bunch of other people. A culture house of, of anarchists, I don't know. And so um, uh, to show them that we actually care about the space, we put our logo right there. Uh, that was pretty sweet. We got a lot of help doing that from other people who are uh, sort of in the community. And then um, because we care about having community events, among other things, lightning talks and workshops and whatnot, but also music events, social events where we just, you know, have fun or invite a lot of uh, musicians or people who like to do like presentations and stuff like that. We uh, built a stage, and now I'm gonna go through an assembly of the stage while you talk us through it, okay, really quickly, because here you no have pallets. We went on a little adventure to steal pallets, actually. Uh, <laughs> it was fun. We had to go all over the town in Oslo. And we figure out his car actually fits 16 pallets in one run, which is amazing. <laughs> and here we are just carrying pallets. High quality pallets, Euro pallets actually, it's a pretty good standard. You learn a lot about pallets when you actually start researching it. 
Uh, we we went really cheap on this project, and so we ended up uh, building it with uh, regular floorboards and pallets, and a really good electric screwdriver. Essential, completely essential. That is, yeah. Always get a Makita if you have the possibility. Yeah, this is a close to the end product, and we built it modular so that we could move this thing. Um, do you imagine how to move? 16 pallets, each of them 25 kilos or something like that? Yeah. And the end product is actually it's 20 pallets. It's uh, 2 by 5 uh, and then 2 in the height. So it does weigh half a ton or something like that for the entire stage. But it did cost nothing, so it's, it's bad. It's good. We modularized and each of the sections is, carry, is individually carried. I think there's four sections. Each one weighs only 100 kilos. And uh, the end result looks like this, uh, with a uh, drum kit and whatnot. And no, it's no more pictures. No. no. Did the slides fuck up? And uh, yeah. I Continue shaving the yak, I think. I did. No, actually, it fell out. That's it, that's it. All right. Uh, we might as well just talk about uh, all the rest of the stuff we did while we uh, opened this. Uh, the rest of the stuff we did was we uh, figured we needed to paint the floor, which we really did. There we go. Ah. And so to paint the floor, we need to wash it. And the floor was in an atrocious state. And so I didn't want to force people to uh, work that hard because really you have to like scrub the floor seriously hard and you don't want to burn everybody's um, energy on doing something really shitty yeah because then they're just not going to come back the next day that's five minutes now so we should oh it's five minutes more sweet and so <laughs> so what I did instead was we went out and we we rented a automatic washing machine like a, a floor scrubber yeah, we spent a lot of money on it, but it was worth it. Nobody had to scrub the floors. It still took a bunch of work, but nobody had to sit there with a brush and go like, Argh, I, hate, I hate you, I hate everybody. We did have to do that with that five-year-old duct tape, though, that was stuck to the floor. Yeah, don't, don't stick duct tape to your floor if you care about it. <laughs> it gets really, really sticky and messy. Let's move that mouse there. So there you actually see the difference between like a clean floor and... So clean and dirty. Uh, it's not that good contrast on this. Uh <laughs> yeah, right? We could have just not painted the floor, though. <laughs> anyway, this was necessary to paint the floor with epoxy, which I thoroughly recommend. It was pretty cheap, and it will last forever. And uh, ooh, that's a big jump. Anyway, the end result and some lighting that we uh, put in there uh, to finish out the stage, right? The big this bar. is just like cheap stuff you will get from when staging companies merge and they will sell all their old equipment for like 15 quids for each light, which is really, really nice. So apparently they came out of order, but whatever. Um, there, here's us actually painting the floor and me looking a little bit confused. And uh, back here again, what? And the end result, yeah? And the end result looks pretty fantastic. So this was worth it. And uh, this was very worth it once you have an event like this and a whole bunch of people show up and uh, enjoy your space. And, uh, and then what did we do? We went vacation. on a vacation. <laughs> so that's it for the lightning talk. And I think we have a little bit of time for questions. Thank you. Uh, actually, we changed that policy, and now only people with the key get in unless we have a workshop or talk. Have you been robbed yet? Uh, multiple times. <laughs> but that was before we closed the door, I guess. Yeah, but they just steal silly things like a broken mixer, for instance. Yeah, it's really weird. We get like break-ins, and we find the doors open, the key is, the, the lock is destroyed, and then 
nothing's gone or they took the broken thing. You know? It's very nice thieves in, in Oslo actually. They're very very helpful. I I think I think they're kinda confused. They go in and they see all this stuff and they're like, ah I don't know how to unplug all of it. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? We'll break off then. Thank you.